Alrighty, what's up everybody? My peeps. How's it going my peeps and you pieces of shit? Peter Joseph here for another video right here on the official Peter Joseph Wrestling Channel. YouTube.com slash Peter Joseph. Thanks for watching. Make sure you like the video and subscribe right now to this very channel and my other channels which are down there in the description box below. So, subscribe to them now. Smash that like button at that end. Hey, leave a comment if you wish. Uh, don't forget to follow me on social media, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Share the video all over the place. And don't forget to tap and slap that bell. So not all notifications so you don't miss a goddamn thing. So you don't be SOL and you know what that means. <laughs> and that's it. And if this is your first time watching, welcome to the party, pal. I hope you enjoy the ride. And if not, get out of here. Go fuck yourself. Pretty much it. Go hang out with douchebags that have no life. And think they're better than other people, but they really are not. They can cl they can brag about how many subs they got, how many views they get on live streams and all that shit. Nobody gives a shit. It's YouTube. Nobody cares. I certainly don't care. I'm not jealous of anybody on here. I don't care if they ha somebody has 5,000 subs. I don't care if they have 10,000 subs. I don't care. I'm here for me and my, my, and my subs and my friends and my peeps. I'm only here for me. Because I'm here for, I'm just here for fun. That's all, that's all YouTube is for me. It's fun. That's it. But if you want to make it into your own, you know, playground or, or courtroom, if you will, you're wasting your time. Pretty much wasting your goddamn time when you could be doing other things. Like, get a job. Straighten out your life. Because you're going to be on here just wasting your time, try, thinking, you're, thinking you're a tough guy, thinking you're a lawyer and this and that, but in, in reality, you're not. And it is what it is. You know? You're just wasting your time. So, just do do something else. Be you. You know? It is what it is. That's that. That's all I'm saying. Alright, enough about that bull funky. Uh, Alright, so, happy Sunday to you all. Week 5 in the NFL in the league where they play for pay. Uh, if you're a Giant fan, uh, you want to really jump off a bridge right now. Uh, they lost again today, 31 to 16 against the Miami Dolphins, who went to four and one. Um, it's it's pretty much over because Daniel Jones got hurt with his neck. The backup quarterback got injured, and you're playing Buffalo on Sunday Night Football next week. You want to get embarrassed again, like you did Week One against the Cowboys? You want to lose 40 to nothing at home? Be my guest. Giants are going nowhere. Nowhere. They're done. It's over. Pack up the bus. I know it's week five, but pack up the bus. It is what it is. Uh, the Jets playing the Broncos. About to start in about ten minutes. So we got that. See how that game goes. Uh, hopefully the Jets can uh, you know, come back from that heartbreaking defeat last week against the Chiefs on Sunday Night Football. If Zach Wilson didn't freaking fumble the goddamn ball... I think the Jets probably would have either tied that game or at least won that game. But it is what it is, you know. They're 1-3 right now, hopefully going, getting a win today in Denver in Mile High Stadium, or whatever that stadium is. Got that. And Sunday Night Football, the game of the week. Probably the game of the year, possibly. Damn boys against the 49ers! 49ers look to go... 5-0, and oh, Brock Purdy looking to go 10-0 and oh in the regular season. We got that. And the, other, and the other undefeated team, those pedophile Eagles, playing the Rams today in L.A. I hope they lose, but I doubt it. But we'll see. What sucks is the Jets have to play the Eagles next week. Ugh. In Jersey. So it's basically a the turnpike game, 
if you if you want to think about it, because it's basically down the turnpike. But we'll see what happens with with all that. Uh, Pittsburgh just beat Otaku's Ravens today, seventeen to ten. Otaku's mad. I can tell he's mad. He's gonna be throwing things in his house, breaking his breaking his his camera, breaking his TV. Anything that's not nailed down in that place. Sucks to be you, dude. You know, nothing bad about... Nothing bad to say about, about Otaku, because he's a pretty good guy. But your Ravens stink. But you knew that already. But... And I think the Ravens played the Niners this year. Oh. Me, me and Otaku might have a war coming up later this year. But it's all in fun. It's all in fun. It's only friendly competition, no betting, no one and all that shit. But it is what it is, and we'll see what what happens with that. Alright, no about that. Boo funky. Let's get to the video. And as the title below says, it is time for your late and out of date WWE Fast Lane review. For last night, October the 6th, 2023, emanating from the Game Bridge Field House. In Indianapolis, Indiana. Alright, so last night... Well, wasn't the, one of the best pay-per-views of the year for WWE. Kind of like a filler pay-per-view, if you will. Uh, as we're on the road to... Now we're on the road to Crown Jewel 5. November the... I believe November the 4th. Yeah, November the 4th. 2023 from... That great country of Saudi Arabia. So we'll be on the we'll, we'll start formulating the matches and storylines that came out of last night into tomorrow night's Monday Night Raw, the Columbus Day edition, and then this Friday night, Friday the thirteenth, the evil man that he is. Oh, he's not evil, but it's our tribal chief, Roman Reigns. Put up your ones. He is back, and he is not a happy camper. I'll tell you that much. He is not happy. Then that's that's it. So that's all happening on SmackDown this Friday on the season premiere. And we'll see what happens with, with all that this week on Raw and SmackDown. And then the big one, the Tuesday night funeral, basically for AEW, uh, NXT, Oscar, Cena... Cody, the wise man Paul Heyman, maybe Becky, maybe Mommy Rhea Ripley, and the, the supposed The Undertaker, the goat of all goats. It is just like a nuclear bomb is going to go off on Tuesday for NXT, and uh, they're going to probably get the best ratings ever. I mean, ever. And AEW, all it's got is H. And one good match. Swerve versus... I, uh, Swerve Strickland versus Brian Danielson. That's good. And then you got Moxley, Ray Phoenix 3 for the international title. It could be good. But we'll see. Um, then you got Edge's in-ring debut against Luchasaurus. Oh, that's going to put get a lot of ratings. I mean, it's in Independence, Missouri, so, I mean, if you can get Taylor Swift on that show, then maybe the ratings might be pretty even, but I think I think Tuesday night is going to be the funeral of AEW in the ratings. But one time only. One time only. Because next Tuesday, NXT's back on its regular time slot. It's on its same, same, same time slot, and AEW most likely will be back in its... Regular time slot, unless the ALCS goes berserk. I don't know, because we're about to probably finish the AL the AL and NL Division Series this week, and probably about this coming weekend. And then they start the Championship Series, which is still on TBS, which sucks. Got that, and then on TNT... We gotta have the start of the hockey season, which starts on Tuesday. Wait, Wednesday, but it's Tuesday. 
You got that, so Rampage and Collision's time, time, uh, time slots will be kind of wacky over the next few months. Yeah, Ramp Rampage and Collision, I should say, their time slot's gonna change. But we'll see what happens with that in the, in the uh, next few months with that. And we move on. All right, so let's get to Fast Lane and our commentary team, as always on pay per view, Mitchell Cole and Corey Slave. And we have that. Like I said, it was a pretty. It was like this, meh, meh pay per view. Didn't really enjoy all of it, but still came off okay. All right, so we start off with a uh, the opening video featuring Indianapolis's own Pat McAfee, who played for the Colts, and we actually see him during the show near the near the end of the show to uh, introduce uh, Eli Drake and John Cena. So he comes out with his uh, the legacy belt for the Colts. You know, I like to have one for they have one for the Niners. I would love to have that, but it's like too much fucking money. Seriously, $500 for that shit. Which is like a replica belt price. But still. I got my own San Francisco belts in the closet. But, I digress. So we get that. And, uh... Then we go... <coughs> excuse me. Go inside the arena. The pyro goes off. We are live, and we start off, which I thought, we, which might have ended the show, but we start off with the undisputed tag team titles being defended by the Judgment Day, consisting of the law firm of Finn and Priest, taking on, yeah, Cody, MDK all day, Cody, you bitch, Cody Rhodes and Jay Uso, main event Jay Uso. Was that, I guess we can call him now Jay Blue So because he was wearing oh well mostly blue. Got that red hair out in the back of his head, now it's all blue. Kinda makes no sense, but okay. Are you trying to become Cena with all the shirts he wears, all the colors of the freaking Crayola box? What's next? Like uh McKit where he did black, he did red. He's now blue. I mean, I think he did yellow, or blonde. Now all, all, all that's left, left is orange. Orange and a couple other colors. I, uh, indigo and violet. You know, go through the rainbow. Taste the rainbow. Skittles. Butt size candies! So I got that. And we move on. Alright. Alright, so this tag team title match was pretty good. It wasn't great, but still... Kind of started off slow and then picked up near the end. So, uh, you know, Cody and J and Jay Uso got a big reaction. Judgment had come out pretty much by themselves. Finn and Priest uh, goes back and forth. I'm just gonna abbreviate this because I have to go off for Sunday dinner, so I'm gonna abbreviate some of this. Uh, so went back and forth a little bit. Cole talks about the show almost sounding like he's pitching it to people that. You know, that are new to the company. Hey, if you're new to the WWE. Anyway, uh, so Jay fights, uh, fights his way out of the corner. Gets the hot tag to Cody, who comes in, cleans house. Get the disaster kick on on theme batter. Then he gives Priest a dragon screw leg whip, leg, 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 leg whip over the rope. Comes in later. Uh, and then Fiend Balor comes right back with 1916 for a near fall. Goes for the coup de gras a little bit too early there, Finn. Uh, then we get a delayed superplex by Mr. Cody Rhodes. Tries to follow it up, but he can't. And then Jey Uso comes, comes in with a high cross body for a near fall on Poppy Priest. Uh, comes right back with a lifting downward spiral for a near fall. And Priest is limping. Uh, they said he has a leg injury. Um, I, I thought it was from the 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 briefcase shot from JD McStupid Stupido. 
which comes up, you know, uh, we get a laser's edge, but gets low bridge to the floor for a ram into the announcer's table, then I hit Michael Cole! Damn! Uh, anyway, go back in, we get a super fly splash uh, by Jey Uso on Priest, followed by a I hate saying this. Cody Cutter. It's not like the Gilmore Cutter. Not even close. To Fiend Balor. And then Jay Uso spears Poppy Priest. And then Q, Mommy, Rhea Ripley, and Dominique Ganero, I see. You know, her Poppy. Uh, Jay superkicks Dom Dom. They get on the outside. And then him and Rhea Ripley have a little stare down. And they smile at each other. Like, hey, how you doing? Hey. Something's going on between those two. Maybe, maybe Jay, like, cheat. Maybe, maybe Rhea, Rhea cheats on Dom Dom with Jay, and now Jay will be her Latino heat when he's not even Latino, but you get what I'm saying. But anyway, go back in. Uh, Jay gets a, uh, on the distraction. He gets Hurry Karana into the coup de gras mm, by Fiend Balor. Goes to the cover. Cody dies for the save. Because he was like w outside waiting. Oh, oh, where's my cue? Okay, here we go. So we get that. And then Rhea hits Jay Uso in the face with a briefcase. Ow. Uh, we we'll get a near fall out of that. And then JD McStupido comes out and swings the case at Cody uh, right on the announce table where Priest was standing. But he hits Priest in the knee, furthering that injury, injured knee. Ow. Dumbass. Uh, then we get Crossroads on the table, which does not break. I am the table! And then, basically, it's over for Finn. Basically, Finn Balor was left for dead. Go back in the ring. We get a Cody Cutter downward spiral combo. I thought that was pretty nice. Uh, on Finn Balor. And then Cody hits, a, hits Crossroads again. On Finn. Goes for the cover. One, two, three. We have... New Undisputed Tag Team Champions in Cody and Jey Uso. I didn't think I would be saying that in 2023 for, for two guys who were at odds for so long with the Plumline storyline with, with Roman last year and into most of this year. But to get the win... I think they, they, they changed the finish on the fly because I, I really think that Judgment Day was supposed to retain. But then again, who knows? With that, I, I don't know. I don't know, but we'll see what happens with that. Uh, anyway. So I gave the max 3.25 out of 5 stars. And uh, your new champions, Cody Rhodes and Jay. Uso, and if, and if you saw the media scrum, they they look basically high as a kite. Well, maybe Jay Uso was. I don't know. Coasting up a storm and all that shit. But it is what it is, and that's it. All right, we move on. Then we go to a segment with because he stuck up. We bad news. We ballot. I'm afraid I got some bad news for you. All right, so they're in the locker room with Xavier Woods, and they they uh, get pizza from Pizza Hut, because I guess that's a sponsor now. Anyway, uh, yeah. I'm not gonna say anything more about that. I, I don't really give two shits. So we move on. Alright, then we go to match number two, the LWO, Latino World, World Order, of Rey Mysterio, Puyaka Puyaka, the United States Champion, along with his best friend Santos Escobar, and the lovely Zanina Vega. Uh, and a partner, a, well, TBA, the ever popular TBA, they take on Bobby Lashley and the Street Profits, Angelo Dawkins and Montez Ford. Or the street mafia, the street business, the hurt business 2.0, whatever you want to call them. Um, Alright, so the LWO come out first. It was just Ray and Santos and Selena Vega. I was like, okay, where's the third man? Well, we don't get the third man until really near the end of the match. Uh, because basically, Bobby 
and the street problems were beating the living crap out of uh, out of Rey Mysterio and Santos. Get near the end. Uh, Ray avoids a big charge from Lashley. Well, Bobby. Montez Ford's right there to pull Santos Escobar off the apron. Smart. Let's get the hot tag. But that earns a Meteora from Sabina Vega. Uh, but still, uh, Ray Mysterio has nobody to tag. And I don't know why, but um, everybody goes to the outside. Then we hear... I spit, in the I spit in the face of people who don't want to be cool. And that's Carlito looking great for a guy that's 44 years old. 42, 44, somewhere around there. But anyway, Carlito comes out. Looks great. He is the third man, but he doesn't pull a Hulk Hogan this time. You know, back in 96. So he comes out. Ray gets the hot tag to Carlito who comes in. Hits a crop kick to Dawkins. And sends him to the floor. And then Ray and Santos hit stereo flippy dibbity news on the outside to Bobby and Angelo Dawkins. So Montez Ford is in the ring. And Colito hits the backstabber. One, two, three, in ten minutes. The LWO get the win, as predicted. And we move on from there. Alright, so we move on. We will move on from that. So, match was alright. I gave it 3 out of 5 stars. And that's pretty much it. And no, I did not pick my nose. And if I did, so fucking what? I got allergies off the wazoo. You know, I do. I know, I do gotta shave. But I will be shaving later. But it is what it is. So, you don't like the way I look? Too fucking bad, because you probably look worse. At least I'm not stoned out of my mind. Or anything like that. But I'm normal. And you're not. So. But if that gets you a lot of views. Then by God. You're doing something. I don't need to be stoned. Or warped out of my mind. I already know I'm you know, I'm a wild and crazy guy. You know, like like uh, Steve Martin. But. I aim to please, and you aim to uh, not please, because nobody, you're not, you're unpleasing, basically, boring. But it is what it is, some of you are just boring to watch. I only watch good people, and that's it. But you still watch me, because I'm, I am just on your, uh, you know, <laughs> you know what it is. You just love me. You're so obsessed with me and other people. That you got no... You got nothing else on your cha on your channels. You got nothing. You worry about me. You worry about other people. And then you expect to... I mean, you get... Yeah, sure. You get like three, five, eight thousand views. Big deal. You're welcome, by the way, for the clout views. But still. You have nothing else on your channel. And then you... You know... I mean, you, have, you can have like... Other channels where you do music and whatever. I mean, that's great for you. But still, I mean, if you got, if you have one channel devoted to... Talking about almost the same exact people. It's, people want something different, you know? That's why I branch out my channels. I have my Peter... This channel is basically... Uh, Pay-per-view reviews, new wrestling news here and there, some blog vlogs here and there. You know, and mostly NXT and AEW, and sometimes New Japan. When I do a New Japan uh, pay-per-view review, if I ever do it, well, besides Forbidden Door and, and uh, Wrestle Kingdom. But I have that. Killer Demons is basically Raw, SmackDown, Rampage, Collision, Ring of Honor... And then I have my rant channel, which is kind of, um, you know, sitting pretty right now. I haven't made a rant in so long, and I don't need to. Unless something really pisses me off. But, as far as, like, this website goes, I, I'm not doing any of that shit. I don't need to, because it just doesn't... I mean, yeah, it, get me, it gets me views and everything. Drama equals views for some people. 
But, I mean, real views, I'm not talking about clout views. I don't, I don't do my rants for, I don't do any of my vids for clout. When I do a rant, and I get like 500 views, it's not clout. It's called doing my job. I'm trying to at least entertain those people that watch me. And I don't watch it 500 times. I don't like my video 10 times or 20 times or whatever amount of likes I get. So, deal with it because you have no proof of it. Among other things you don't, you can't prove. Pedophilia, that went out the window. That, that is way out the window. And now saying that I raped my cat, no. No. It was just a bad joke that I said two years ago that, as always, people take what I say, twist it into their own narrative, and think that I admit I admitted to raping my cat. And if I if I did, Peter would be at my door. But they can't even prove that either. Because there is no proof. I love my cat, I, fe I feed my cat, I don't do it like shit. I don't beat my cat or abuse my cat, I'm like cheating fucking long, okay? Oh, I said his name, sorry. Charlie. I'm not that, that animal abuser, freaking child abuser. Oh, I ran in my ways, but you still did it. And even if people forgive you now, I mean, still, you're a piece of shit. You're still a piece of shit. But, I mean, people can call me a pedophile all they want. There's no fucking proof of it. Oh, but you admitted to it on this guy's channel. No, I didn't. No, I didn't. The only thing I did admit was saying what I said back in 2012. That's the only thing I admitted. It's over. 11 years. Going on 12 years. And we're still going with this shit. Oh, you told her to suck your dick in 2015. Again, took my words out of context, wrapped it around your finger, and made it to say that, oh, you know, Trap Queen wanted to, wanted to suck my dick, or I wanted Trap Queen to suck my dick when she was 15, 16 years old. No. No. That's all water under the bridge. And it is what it is. Ah, you wanted to rape a 13-year-old. You wanted to meet him in Jersey. That's a scare tactic. I wasn't really gonna go to Jersey and meet up with a douchebag fucking fake kid. So, you can think what you want, but like I said, you don't have any valuable proof that could work in a court of law. So, pretty much it's slander. All you're doing is doing videos slandering my name when you say that. And then posting little bits and bitty clips. That's not going to work. No judge or jury going to believe you. That's why I call it statue, statute of limitations. It's pretty much over. It's been 12 years. With the track queen situation, it's been t uh, t almost 12 years. But if you want to go with that fake kid story that's going on four years now, that ain't going to work either. So, you pretty much lost your chance. So, no pun intended, but you you lost your chance right then and then. So, you cannot, can kiss my ass. Because you got nothing. You got nothing. You want to make those claims, then tell it, you know. You went, you, uh, preaching to the choir and nobody's listening to you, basically. Because there's, there is no valid proof. Valid. It's not valid. All you got is bits and pieces of video clips, and that's, that's old shit. It's old as shit. The whole map thing, that is fake as fuck. That was proven to be fake as fuck. Was you people like the black like to try to blackmail me, and it and it failed miserably. All these threats failed miserably, and now pretty much the ball's in my court, and I would just leave it at that. So, 
I'm going to leave it at that. So, if you want to keep calling me pedophile and this and that, <coughs> that too. Uh, want to keep calling me pedophile? Want to keep calling me a cat diddler? Want to make fun of my appearance? Want to call my girlfriend Shrek? And want to make funny names about my girlfriend? I don't give a shit. But you know, want to make threats and all this other shit? Don't work. It does not work. You are just wasting your goddamn time. You're wasting your time. And if you think you can, you can do what you're doing to other people, that's going to backfire too. And it already has backfired. But you want to go with Operation This and That, and that's not going to work either. Because that's going to come back to bite you. That's why they, that's why they call it Karma, because it's a bitch. And so are you. And we move on. Cause I have, I, I, I'm tired of talking about it. I'm just tired of talking about it. So, I'm, so if you want to call me pedophile, it's gonna go. Whoop, 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 whoop. It's just words. It's just words. No valid proof. Nothing. And these lame little tricks and man, all, all this other bullshit ain't gonna work either. So, you lost. So deal with it. And if you can't deal with it, then you will be dealt with one way or another. Not by the cops, it might be from the man upstairs, okay? So if you want to ruin your life, and then when you're like 50 or 60, maybe in a jail cell, or still living at home with your mama, or in an old folks home, and you want to, oh, I wish I was 20, 30 years old again. I wish I didn't do those things back then. Look where I am now. Getting gummy blowjobs in a nurse's home or something like that. Or just having a really bad life. You're you're old. You have you may or may not have a have a job. You're on social security. That's the only way you can get money. And then you got to look back at what you did in your 20s and 30s and maybe your 40s. And you're like, God damn, why did I fucking do all that shit? Why did I waste my time on YouTube when I could have been, you know, I could have went out for a walk. I could have read a book. Could have watched some TV. Could have banged a hot chick. It's just, you're just wasting fucking precious time. And if, you know, you want to use, you want to use your time, you yeah, stupid motorcycle, uh, you want to waste your time on YouTube doing videos and, you know, trying to get all these people to believe you and then, you know, that they, they get brainwashed and all that shit and attacking mentally, dis mentally disabled people because you think you're better than them. And you, you claim that they're pedophiles or, you know, you think that you're better than them. You're the bully or whatever. I'm better than you because you suck. Then you're nothing. You're nothing to them. We're stronger than you. And you know it. But like I said, if you think you're Chris Hansen, you're, you're you know... You think you, you, you're above the law. You know the law. You don't know the law. Because you thought it could work. And it, it did not work. For some, with some people. It did not work. And even if you, if. You know what they did. You know could have put them in jail. Still you know. It is what it is. That's that's pretty much it. I'm not gonna go further with that, but all I will I all I will say is that you can you can make fun of me all you want. Do your little parlor tricks that fail. I'm just gonna keep being me, and I'm just gonna not give a shit. I'm not gonna care. I'm gonna 
pretty much ignore some people, but, you know, keep bringing people, my name up, Otaku, or every, anybody else's name up, in your lame as fuck videos, just, just so you can get clout. I don't bring anybody's names up besides the persons that I bring up, like Otaku's name. I brought up Otaku's name for reference. Not for drama, not any anything like that. But you think I you if you think I'm talking about you, then you you're delusional because I didn't bring you up by name. I could be talking about some other guy who has six thousand views. It doesn't have to be you. Another guy that's, you know, I could bring up another guy that's warped and out of his mind. Doesn't have to be that person, uh, you know. Doesn't have to be somebody else. I mean, I could talk about somebody else who's warped and stoned. Doesn't have to be, you know, cer uh, certain people, but but that's how people are. Oh, he talked about me. Uh, no, I didn't, because I didn't say your name, retard. I mean, I mean, but I put I, if I put up a community post like, oh, you know, I hate, you know, what grinds my gears, you know, people that think they're above people, they know the law, they know this and that. I'm not talking about something I saw on YouTube or on a community post. I'm talking in general, in general, not about a specific person. If I wanted to, then I would actually. Put that person's name in there, or I would post their video. But I don't do that. Because I don't care about people that do videos on me, or say something in their community posts. I don't care. It just makes me laugh. Because I've been bullied all my, all my life. 46 years I've been pretty much bullied on and off this website. But who comes out stronger in the end? This guy. So, it is what it is. So, I care less for, for groups, units, I don't give a shit. Because, basically, they're nothing. They're, they're nothing to me. They're, they're way off my radar, and I don't need to even talk about them. I don't care about them. All I care about is me, and my family, and my friends that I made on and off YouTube. Okay? I don't really give two shits about YouTube. I only do YouTube for fun and for me. And for my subscribers. I don't do it for anybody else. If you think I'm, I'm on YouTube 24-7, 365, you're a fucking douchebag. Because you have no proof of that either. And you want me to show watch, watch time analytics. I'm not showing you shit. Oh, that, that proves it. We're right. You can't debate us. I don't need to debate you. I don't need to. Because I know if I go on a panel, it's going to be like a 5 on 1 or 10 on 1, whatever it is. I'm not going on that shit. I don't need to. And you can call me a pussy. You can call me a coward. But I get more pussy than you anyway. Just a simple fucking fact. That you're not better than anybody on this website or in real life. You're not. I'm not better than anybody on this website or in real life either. But I have a ton of friends. You think I don't have friends? I got a ton of friends. On and off this website. So, keep making your claims, your slander. Basically, Phoenix slander. Do your lame videos, steal my content. I don't give a shit. But thank you for watching, assholes. And have fun. Have fun. But you think you, you can... You can manipulate people. Do your little tricks and stuff. It's not, not going to work. Nobody's going to give two shits. You want to harass people, then you're going to get harassed yourself. But don't cry to me. Don't cry when it happens to you. When the shoe's on the other foot. And your family's getting harassed. And you're, and you're getting harassed too. Don't come crying to people like me. For, for the shit that you do, and then, in turn, you get it 10 times or 20 times worse. So that's my little rant for the day. 
So, in closing, fuck you, man. That's it. All right, we move on. All right, so Carlito, back to fast lane. Carlito, uh, Santos Escobar, and Rey Mysterio get the win over the Street Profits. And Bobby Lashley in 10 minutes. It was an okay match, and I gave it 3 out of 5 stars. And let's move on. Alright, after that, uh, Xavier Woods brings out some pizza to uh, Michael Cole and uh, Corey Graves, and nobody gives a shit. Then we see uh, what we didn't see on the, what we saw on the kickoff show, but we get it replayed. Jade Cargill, looking amazing, arrives to the arena, is met by the game, Triple H. He's in her gear. I'm like, ooh, is she going to appear on the show? No, she did not appear on the show. But she looked great. Arriving to the arena. And then Kip Rich goes out to meet her, shakes her hand. Oh, I can't wait. I think she's going to appear on Tuesday night. If not this week. She will appear this week. I don't know where. Be Raw or SmackDown or maybe NXT. I mean, they got a bombastic show on Tuesday. It can only get better if Jay's there. If Jade is on NXT, good night AEW. I nobody's gonna watch. Nobody's watching. I don't think anybody's watching anyway on Wednesday night, uh, Tuesday night. I might watch a little bit, but I'm watching NXT fully on on Tuesday night. I have it in picture in picture, but my main attention will be NXT. I mean, God forbid the Undertaker shows up. I mean, the Goat of All Goats, one of my favorites. My favorite wrestler of all time is the Undertaker, the Goat of All Goats. I thought you liked Roman. I do like Roman, but he's not the GOAT right now. I mean, now he's the GOAT, but of all time, no. He's number two. He's number one in my heart, number one in Issa's heart, but still, the GOAT of all GOATs of the modern era is the Undertaker. And that's all I'm going to say about that. Yeah, he beat the Undertaker at WrestleMania 30. 33, I don't care. I don't care. And yeah, I'd said some stuff, mean stuff about him way back in the day. Wishing him, de wishing death on his character. Not the man, not the man, Joseph Annoy, or Annoy, whatever how you pronounce it. But, but, you know, ever since, you know, that whole thing with when he got leukemia, wiped that all out. And now, I, ever since, like, you know, Basically, 2018, 2019, I've, I've really been respecting Roman. His promos stunk at the time. But now, ever since he's really become the tribal chief, guy is the fucking greatest thing since sliced bread. And no, I do not like Roman because I, of Issa. No. 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 Yo, I don't, I, you only sub to Issa because she likes Roman. No. I like Roman way before I met Issa. Way before. I didn't even know about Issa until Otaku's video that he did on her and basically got bitch slapped by her and a whole ton of people. I think I... I, I subbed to her maybe in 2020, 2021, I think. So it's been about two years, I think. Since I've known the lovely Puerto Rican princess Issa. I love her. We're good friends. We love each other. Not like that, but you know, we have we have mutual respect for each other. We're there for each other, and she's um uh, you know I'm glad to be one of her main supporters, and I'm and I know she's glad to have me on in her chat as a friend. We talk behind the scenes and everything. It's good, good. So you think I'm I'm a simp? Not even close. I mean, she is an attractive lady, and I'd love to be with her, but respectfully, I love her. Respectfully. But it is what it is, and that's that. But. It is what it is. Alright, move on. Alright, so we got Jade's day butt on the kickoff show. And then we get to the Triple Threat Women's Championship match for the, the SmackDown title. Respect. For the WWE Women's Championship, 
the lovely EO Sky, my third wife, taking on my first wife, Asuka. Nobody is ready for Asuka, except my motherfucking dick. And taking on Horse Face Shaw the Flare. Alright, this was a pretty damn good match. Uh, Stozo with Asuka blowing the blue Kool-Aid in Charlotte's face, messing up her nice little gear. Aww. So we get EO and Asuka one-on-one -on -one as, uh, you know, doctors are trying to get the mist out of her face. Get it out, I can't see you! Get the water, you know. Five fucking minutes later, Charlotte gets back into the goddamn match. Should've blew the red mist like the Great Muda. The one that really, that really fucks you up. But I digress. Uh, so anyway, she gets back in the match. Match goes, goes pretty well. Back and forth. Lots of near falls. Uh, EO hits a, EO, uh, EO hits a moonsault to Asuka. And then Charlie moonsaults off the top onto both of them. On the outside. Go back in. Charlie goes goes up top with EO. Only to get caught in the Tower of Doom spot. That I thought was pretty damn nice. Uh, Charlie's able to grab a Boston Crab in Indianapolis. Uh, to Asuka. EO makes the save with a running Meteora. And then we get a little bit of a compli complicated situation. As Asuka grabs a uh, leg lock on Charlotte, and then EO, not to be all done, grabs a crossface, and then everybody's like, well, what happens if Charlotte taps? Well, she tapped, we don't have a winner, because the match still continues, and Asuka and EO will become winners, I guess. I don't know how that works. But anyway, uh, Charlotte doesn't tap, and gets up, of course, hits that spear, and was cutting, I think it was Asuka in half, and then Bailey Give me a hug. Against EO's wishes, I told you not to come out! Um, she comes out as Charlotte gets the figure eight on Asuka, and Asuka's about to tap. Uh, and then she gets involved, referee doesn't see Asuka's tapping. And even earlier when she came out, you know, EO's like, like, get out of here! And I'm like, damn it, Bailey, if you cost her, I'm gonna beat the fuck. I'm gonna be pissed! But, I mean, there was a little bit of a miscommunication early on, but Bailey made up for it as uh, she distracted a referee who didn't see EO tapping, and then EO goes up top, hits the, hits the over the moon salt, moon salt, that great moon salt of hers, onto Charlotte while Asuka's still in the figure eight. And then EO, EO goes for the cover on Charlotte. Mind you, Charlotte has, doesn't take pins a lot, except for Andrade. But I digress. Uh, but EO pins Charlotte. One, two, three to retain. Yes, to retain the Women's Championship in 17 minutes. I'm happy for that. I don't care that Asuka didn't take the pin. She didn't win the title. She'll get it eventually. But right now, EO still your reigning defending Women's champion, and I couldn't be any happier. So I gave the match 3.25 out of 5 stars. So we'll see what happens this Friday night on SmackDown, where EO goes from here. I think Charlotte might have a little bit of a gripe with Bailey. Maybe Asuka does too, I don't know. But, but I, ha I do have to say one thing to that idiot. At the media scrum, asking EO, uh, what, do you th what do you think about Taylor Swift? Do you think Taylor Swift can get a shot at the WWE Women's Championship? EO's like, are you, cra are you, are you crazy? What the, who the fuck are you? Clown question. That's, that's a question a mark would ask. And you, sir, that asked that question at the media scrum are the biggest fucking pile of mark shit i ever seen in my life. Fuck you. If I was at that media scrum, I, I would yell out, Clown question! Fucking Mark! 
Was that Nick Houseman asking that question, that fucking idiot? Probably wasn't him, but... Why would you ask EO a question like that? Are you a fucking moron? I'm glad EO answered the question, you know, the way she did. It's like, uh, uh, I guess... Are you crazy? I, I don't know. I guess. You know what I would have said? I was like, fuck. Like, fuck her. So like, you ask the question like that, fuck you. Get him out. I would ask security to take that fucking guy out. I'm like, fuck him. So like, come back when you ask, you, you, you can a actually ask me a question, you mark. Fuck that guy. I mean, seriously, fuck that guy. You see, Is would, would Isu ask Eo a question like that? Fuck no. You think guys like, uh, you know, Joey from um, the Angle podcast would ask that? You know, Joey's, Joey's friends with Isu? No, he won't. If Joe Cronin was there, you would, you would ask Eo that? No. JD? Probably not, because, well, who knows with JD, because JD's an idiot. But I digress. But would anybody else, besides that fucking Mark, ask Eo that question? No. I think he wanted his 15 seconds of fame. He got it, and then pfft, now he's a star on the internet. Good job, idiot. Or as MJF would say, you fucking Mark! I wonder if his name is actually Mark. That would be something. You, you're a fucking Mark, Mark. Idiot. Idiot question. Please, for the love of God, do not appear at the next at the next media scrum. If you go to Saudi Arabia and you ask somebody like some like Sino or Roman that question, Roman would beat the fuck out of you. Or really embarrass you to the point of no return. Like Nick Houseman did. Uh I forgot what pay-per-view it was what uh, Issa was sitting next to him. I think it was at uh, WrestleMania or was I don't remember what pay-per-view it was. But Nick Hausman asked Paul Heyman something. And Roman was there. And Roman... You now they got... It's like... Oops. Why would you ask something like that? And then Heyman and Roman pointed to Issa. It's like, oh, she should have asked the question. Obviously, yeah, she should. Because Nick Hausman... You're weird. I mean, I mean, if it was Sean Ross Sapp, then, you know, that guy's an idiot too, but at least he provides good scoops once in a while. Not like Meltzer, you know, Uncle Dave. Hey, Uncle Dave, what's for, you know, what's the scoop? How many stars did you give that? But anyway, yeah. Fuck that guy who asked EO that stupid question about Taylor Swift. Stupid. Anyway, move on. Uh. Alright, so EO retains matching a 3.25 out of 5 stars. Then we're going to look at Cody and Jay Uso winning the tag team belts earlier in the in the night. Get that. Then we see E. Lie. Trick. That's not an insult. That is a fact of life. He arrives in a Slim Jim racing car. Ooh, yeah! Stop to a Slim Jim! Ooh, yeah! Wouldn't it be funny if he, if, he, if he came out in the Slim Jim monster truck that, that uh, the Macho Man Randy Savage came out in Halloween Havoc? You remember that? We all remember that one, right? Randy, you remember that? Ooh, yeah! I was driving it! I was snapping into it! Ooh, yeah! Yeah, now it's in the WWE warehouse somewhere. It is was I think it was that, I think I don't even know what I know it's a Halloween Hammer. I forgot who he was facing. It was not when he was in the NWO. I think it was way before he even joined the NWO. I think he was facing Hogan. I don't even know. Who cares? Anyway, so we see him arrive into the arena with that car. And 
it, we saw it earlier in the night, and then it pulled back. I'm like, mm, somebody messed up. I don't know. All right, we move on. All right, then we get Pat McAfee coming out with the in and, uh, with the Colts title belt. For a little surprise. He's like, I, went, I wasn't going to miss this show. It was in my hometown. I need that hometown energy and that pop. Why not? So then he introduces John Cena for our fourth match of the night. Cena teams up with Eli to take on the bloodline of Jimmy and Solo Mibuki, along with the wise man, Paul Heyman. So it was a pretty much back and forth match. Uh, a few uh, few funny parts in, in the match where uh, Paul Heyman freaking like, doo, 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 you know. Weirdness. And then Jimmy's like, let's go solo. Didn't catch on with the crowd. He goes to the bonsai drop. Got raised knees. And then Eli comes in and cleans house. Then everything breaks down. We've got the, uh, the ever popular Eli Drake. Yeah. Elbow on Jimmy. And then Cena hits a high cross body on Solo. But Jimmy comes right back with a super fly. Splash to Cena, and then all four men are down. Eli gets sent outside. Cena loads up the AA on Solo, but Jimmy saves him with a super kick. And then Jimmy goes up top, I guess looking for another Superfly Splash. Eli comes in, and he jumps up for a beautiful superplex. And then Cena does what he does, the stupid moves of Doom. The fine knuckle shuffle. Fine knuckle shuffle, kids. You can't see me, kids. And that lead, uh, he hits that, and that sets up the BFT on Jimmy. They get the win in under 17 and a half minutes, and that's it. And um, after the match, uh, Eli and Cena they shake hands, and then you know Cena was like, "Oh, let's raise his hand!" Like Eli's like, "Whoa, whoa, 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 no, I'll do it." So then he raised Cena's hand, and everybody's happy. But you know who's not happy? Roman. Because we see Paul Heyman go, call Roman Reigns. Hangs up the phone. Roman is not going to be happy on when he arrives to the arena. If I were you, Jimmy, and Jimmy and Solo, well, not so much Solo, but if I was you, Jimmy, I would not even come to the arena on Friday night. And you know else should not appear on, on that show? The Judgment Day. I know that them and, and the Bloodline had a union on SmackDown. That didn't work out so well, huh? No. Not even close. JD McFl McStupido is going to get probably kicked out of the Judgment Day on Monday. Or he's going to get a really big tongue lashing. Well, he should, he should, they should have, if Priest can go on Monday, Priest should fight should fight JD McDoofus. Beat him, beat him so bad he, he goes back to Ireland. Doesn't come back for about five months. El Stupido. Oh, wow. This Ole defense from the Jets. Holy shit. On a freaking quarterback that stinks. Goes for like 30, uh, 25, 30 yards almost. Ole defense. It's it's a close game. 7-5. to five. It was 3 nothing to... Uh, Broncos scored, and then the Jets got a safety somehow. And now it looks like it's about to be either 14 to 5 or 10 to 5. So, doesn't look good for the Jets right now, and I didn't pick the Jets. So, so, oh, wait, no, sad, wait, did I? I, I, gotta look my, I think I did pick the Jets this game. And you know what happens. When I pick the Jets and the Giants to win, they lose. And when I pick them to lose, they win. But I think I picked... I think I picked the Broncos at home. But... It is what it is. <sighs> Yippee. Alright, so Cena and Eli get the win. And, um... That's all I will say about that. Match was alright. Gave it 3 out of 5 stars. Let me move on. Then we see, uh... Damien Priest uh, telling the Judgment Day he wants to cash in his Money in the Bank briefcase 
you know, because the, the Last Man Standing match is coming up next. But Mommy Rhea Ripley, once again, the voice of reason, says, you're too banged up, your knee is shot, uh, don't go out. So they don't, so it's like, we're not letting you go out. But, you know, how, you know how Priest is, he's a, he's a mean one, he's a fighter, he wants to go out. But he does not. And we move on. Alright, then we see the Indiana Hoosiers football team, including Declan McMahon. Oh, we all know who he is, right? But if you don't know, that's Shane McMahon's son. Uh, his grandson, sorry. Well, his son, Vince's grandson. Uh, wonder how he got there. Vince. But anyway, we got that. Nobody cared. Then we see the Brawling Brutes. I don't, I don't, I think we see Rich Holland and Butch. Uh, they're playing with the new WWE toy truck. Playing with their toys. It is what it is. Sir! What? You need it on the you need it on the bridge. Good. Did you see anything? No, sir. I didn't see you playing with your dolls again. Knock next time! Knock! If you don't know that movie that's from, you got problems. Your helmet is so Big. <laughs> anyway, move on. All right, then we go to your main event for the world heavyweight title. Last man standing. Seth freaking Rollins against Shinsuke Nakamura. Shinsuke came out looking like an origami. All white, maybe an angel. But then he takes the, the robe off and he's, it's in black and red. So he, was a, he came out as an angel, but he came in the ring as a devil. Angel of death. Yeah. Blah, blah, blah. Set comes out in a good fit. That's it. Alright, this match was freaking barbaric. Tables. Uh, chairs. The announce table was broken a few times. They go in the crowd. Uh, Rouse back looked like it was about to give out. I mean, lots of, lots of, uh, you know, near misses here. Rollins got up at 8. Nakamura got up at 8. A couple of times, there was like, they got up at 9.5. But then they go in the ring. Uh, I think they were in the ring. No, they go on the announcer's table for climbing the ladder. Nakamura gets on the other side. He missed uh, Rollins. Red missed, by the way. Off the ladder, through the table. I was like, oh, he won the title now, right? Wrong. Rollins somehow got up at nine. Then it could Sasha through the table that was in the ring. Uh, Seth gets up at 9.5. And rolls to the floor to survive, losing the belt. Then he takes him into the crowd again. They go on this platform, strategically placed, by the way. Rollins, Rollins manages a pedigree and a stomp. Onto the platform, Nakamura gets up at 9, and then Seth Rollins picks him up, hits a falcon arrow through the table. Huh, like I said, strategically placed platform and table. Because that was on the floor, forget it. But anyway, Seth Rollins hits the falcon arrow through the table, both men are down, the referee's counting him out, and Seth stands on the Broken part of the table as Nakamura was on the floor and he's trying to get up, but he, nobody's help. He's not going to be able to get up unless some fan helps him up. But Seth Rollins is your winner. He survives the last man standing match. Sucks. No cash in as of right now, but we'll see tomorrow on Raw. But match was barbaric and I give it three and a half out of five stars. So Rollins is still your world heavyweight champion. Still, why, why can they never can they not pull the trigger with Shinsuke Nakamura to win the title? Every time he gets a, ti a world title shot, gets cut off. Why? This was the perfect match for him to win the belt. Unless there's one more match, and dare I say, Hell in a Cell. I 
mean, if you're not going to give Shinsuke the world title, then why you have him there? At this point, send him back to Japan. Send him back to New Japan. Let him be in New Japan strong or New Japan, New Japan. Like, just let him be the god that he was in Japan. The not like two years he had like the Intercontinental title. Just like it just feels like Shinsuke is like it's like one minute he's great getting a big humongous push. Yeah, he'll get a title here and there. But then it goes nowhere after that. And then they, you push him all the way down to basically he's almost in catering. And then, oh yeah, we'll bring him back up. We'll give him Rick Boogs. They don't win the tag titles, obviously. Oh no, they did win the t- I think they did win the tag titles. I went for it and Boogs got hurt. I forget. And then after Rick's Bo- Rick Boogs gets hurt at WrestleMania, she's going to go back down a little bit. And then he's back up again. Now he had a pretty... I thought a pretty decent feud with Seth. But now where does he go? Back to obscurity? Or does he stay in the main event picture at least? I'll be fine with that. Obviously he's not going to go for the Intercontinental title until Walter loses it. Or do they trade him to SmackDown? Maybe he goes after the United States title that uh, Rey Mysterio has. I mean he's won it before. Didn't last that long. Intercontinental title. Held it for maybe a couple months. Lost it to, I think, Jeff Hardy. Big fucking whoop. Tag team champion with Cesaro, which I thought was good. Then that fizzled out. I think the only time he was actually good was in NXT when it was two time, two time NXT champ. Those great matches with Sami Zayn. It was a fucking epic match with Sami Zayn. Bring him up to the main roster? Yeah. He wins the Royal Rumble? Yes. But they give him the title at WrestleMania? No. They do the stupid nut shot crap for five straight pay-per-views. Or, uh, four or five straight pay-per-views, which was dumb. Don't give him the title then. And then he's like up and down. Up and down and like, like get rid of him at this point. Now he's back. He comes back. He turns heel, which I thought was great because his promos were great. The Japanese style, strong style promos in Japanese. Loved it. I loved it. I want more of it. But now, what do you do with him? Do you ha- do you do one more match at Crown Jewel? Maybe put it in Hell in a Cell. Was you put it in a cage like? Pfft. Cage is boring. You want to end the feud, then end it in Hell in a Cell. It's the only way you can do. You can do it. But you have to. If they do one more and it's in Hell in a Cell, please, for the love of God, make Shinsuke the champion. I don't care if Priest comes out and cashes in. At least Shinsuke was the champ, even for like five seconds. I'd rather have Shinsuke win, no cash in, and have Priest, Priest maybe beat him. Next year sometime. Not like he's going to win at the Royal Rumble or anything. Or even at the Elimination Chamber. But we'll have to see what happens with that. And we move on. Alright, that is it for now. Thank you all for watching. Uh, my final rating for Fastlane. 6.5 out of 10 stars. But let me know what you guys think of the show. Down below. In the comments section. Uh... Once again, hit that like button, hit the subscribe button, uh, smash the bell to get more, share the video all over the place, and all that other good shit. So, I'm out of here, I'm gonna have, I'm gonna head on out for Sunday dinner, and I'll be back later tonight with my Rampage and Collision review. So I wanna get that out of the way, and then go to sleep, and enjoy my day off tomorrow, even though I have some errands to run on Columbus Day. And then we'll get ready for Columbus Day, Monday night. Well, the aftermath of this very pay-per-view. So we'll see what happens with that. Alright, so thanks for watching, everybody. I'm Peter Joseph signing off. Peace out, rock on, and rock hard with your cookout. And if you're not down with that, well, 
That's just too goddamn fucking bad. So like I said before, you think you're better than me, you're not. Clearly not. Not in this life, this lifetime, or the next lifetime. You're not. You're not better than me by a long shot. But if you want to keep doing your bullshit, then it's going to come way right back to you. Trust me on that. It will come back to bite you in your ugly, disgusting ass. Because I got no time for that petty drama bullshit. I got other things to worry about in my life. Rather than boring as fuck drama on YouTube. That I really don't want any part of anymore. I just don't. I got my circle of friends on YouTube. My humongous circle of friends away from YouTube. And that's all I'm worried about. Besides my health, besides the missus, and besides my family. I don't give two shits about YouTube. I'm only on this website for fun and to talk about wrestling or whatever the fuck I want to talk about. And if you like it, great. You don't, fuck off. And rot in hell. Simple as that. But if you're still not down with that, then... Me and everybody else, and I mean everybody else, we all got three of the greatest words in the history of YouTube in life itself. And that those three words are, ladies and gentlemen, and you sons of bitches, remember this. Fuck you, man. Because you're not going to do anything about it. Even if you tried. So, go fuck yourselves, suck a fat one, and keep doing your lame as fuck videos. Because they suck too. So. Have a nice life. Go fuck yourself. And fuck you man. That's it. Thanks for watching. I'm out of here. Peace.